Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the third type of realization of the universal gate NAND gate, which is TTL. So TTL stands for transistor transistor logic. <coughs> transistor transistor logic. So transistor transistor logic means the entire logic realization consisting of transistors along with resistors. But the in, uh, interesting thing in this particular TTL logic is along with the transistors and resistors, we will also use diodes here. But the diodes are used for the protection of the transistor Q1. <coughs> the purpose of diode D1 and D2 is to protect the transistor Q1 from the negative spikes. Suppose if there is any short circuit occurred at the input side, instead of we are having a 0 volts and plus 5 volts, if any negative volt is given, that negative spike will not disturb the transistor Q1. Whenever the negative pulse occurs, what happens immediately the diodes D1 and D2 comes into on state and it immediately discharges through this one. So immediately that negative spike will be grounded through the diodes D1 and D2. That will not disturb the transistor Q1. So that is the reason why we are having diodes here. Even if the diodes are not there, we can use the same circuit for the operation of NAND operation. But the importance of diodes D1 and D2, whenever a negative pulse comes, automatically that will be grounded through the diode D1 and D2. Okay. Now let us see the circuit construction. <coughs> there are four transistors we are using Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Out of these four, the transistor Q1 is a multi emitter transistor. Transistor Q1 is a multi emitter transistor. Multi emitter transistor. That means it will be having it will be having more than one emitter, unlike other transistors. Okay. So how many number of emitters are there that many inputs we are taking suppose if there are three inputs a b c then we should consider three emitter transistor as there are two inputs here it's a two input NAND gate that's why two inputs are there so these two inputs are given with the two emitters of the q1 <coughs> whereas the remaining transistors q2 q3 q4 are nothing but normal transistors and the arrangement of q3 and D3 and Q4. This arrangement is known as totem pole. This arrangement is known as totem pole arrangement. This arrangement is nothing but totem pole arrangement. Totem pole arrangement consisting of transistor, diode and then transistor. So these three in series is known as totem pole arrangement. So this totem pole arrangement is nothing but whenever the transistor Q3 comes into on state, D3 comes into on state, but Q4 comes into off state. Here Q3 and Q4 we can say in our technology we can say they are acting as a push-pull configuration. When Q3 is in on state, Q4 definitely it should be in off state. Okay. Let us see how this is happening and similarly when Q3 is in off state, Q4 comes into on state. That is the reason why this particular, uh, these three network is known as a totem pole. So Q3 is on Q4. Okay. So the transistor Q3 sits above Q4 and therefore Q3 and Q4 make this totem pole arrangement. I will write here. The transistor Q3 sits above, the transistor Q3 sits above on Q4 and therefore Q3 and Q4 make a totem pole arrangement, totem pole arrangement. Okay, now let us see the operation of this particular TTL NAND gate using the truth table. 
So two inputs are there, A, B, and how many transistors are there? Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Okay, I am not say taking D3. D3 and Q3 both are same. We can say D3 and Q3 in one line because when Q3 is in on state, D3 comes into on state because the current will be flowing through this one only. When Q3 is in off state, definitely Q3 D3 will also be in on state. So that's why I'm taking Q3 and D3 in a set, and Q4 after that will be having out output. Consider 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. These are the four different combinations of the inputs. Now, consider the first case 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 that Q. See here, this is the base, this is emitter 1, and this is emitter 2. Base is connected to VCC. Base is connected to VCC. That means base is having the sufficient potential with respect to the emitter. If emitter is connected to ground, either emitter 1 or emitter 2, the transistor, overall transistor Q1 set to be on state, irrespective of any one of the emitters. Okay. If any one of the emitters is on, then we can say the Q1 is in on state. Okay. Now let us see, in the first case we are giving both are zeros. So base is at positive terminal and the emitter 1 and emitter 2 are at zeros. So it will be having base emitter junction, it is having the minimum cutting voltage required for the transistor to come into on state. So Q1 is in on state. As Q1 is in on state, the current directly goes towards emitters. Okay, base to emitter junction is on. So whatever the current coming from the VCC to the base, that directly goes towards the A input and as well as B input because those two are connected at the ground. Okay, the current will be grounded in that way. What about the Q2? Q2 does not have any input current because transistor is in on state. So as there is no current entering into the base of this transistor Q2, so Q2 simply comes into off state. Q2 is in off state. As Q2 is in off state, the current will not flow in this direction. So what happens? From VCC through this R2, whatever the current comes, that directly goes to the input of the transistor Q3. And as Q2 is in on state, there is no current flow from VCC to the input of Q4. So that means Q4 is not having any input. Okay, Q3 is having input. So Q3 is in on state. As Q3 is in on state, the current will be flowing through D3, D3 also in on state. What about Q4? Q4 is in off state. As Q4 is in off state and Q3 is in on state, the current will be flowing in the output. So output is equal to logic 1. Output is equal to logic 1. Now let us see the second case 0 and 1. In this case, we are giving A as 0. B is equal to 1. B is equal to 1 means the second junction B to E2 base to emitter 2 is off. Base to emitter 2 is off. But what about the base to emitter 1? Base to emitter 1 is on. So any one emitter junction is sufficient to flow the current. Any one emitter current, emitter voltage is sufficient to say the transistor Q1 is in on state. So Q1 is in on state here. This is on because base to emitter 1 is on. So as Q1 is in on state, the remaining transistor statuses are common, same. Because that is the only transistor that will change the status of the remaining three transistors. So off, on and then off, so output is equal to 1. And if you take A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, then also we can say Q1 is in on state, Q2 off and Q3 or D3 on. Simply what happens, Q4 off and output is equal to 1. Now coming to the case when emitter 1 and emitter 2 are connected with the positive supply which is plus 5 volts. Then in any one of the cases, there is no potential gap, potential difference from base to emitter 1 or base to emitter 2. We can say the transistor is in off state. So as the transistor is in off state, 
the current will be flowing in this direction now. So there is a sufficient current flow towards the base of the transistor Q2. So what we can say Q2, so Q1 of Q2 on all the status of the transistors will be inverted. So as the transistor Q2 is in on, it is on. So what about the transistors Q3 and Q4? As it is on, the current will be flowing from VCC to the ground or VCC towards the base of the transistor Q4. So Q4 will be on and Q3 will be off. As Q3 is off, there is no flow of current towards the D3. So D3 is also in off state. And the current directly goes to the input of Q4. So Q4 comes into on. So as Q4 is in on state, the output is directly connected to ground. So output is equal to 0. Okay. So in this way, we can see the operation of this particular transistor uh, transistor logic for the NAND operation. For the NAND operation. <laughs> we can write the output voltage equation. Output voltage V0 is equal to VCC minus VR2. VR2 is nothing but this one. Okay. So, V0 is equal to VCC minus VR2 minus VBE3, VBE3, VBE3 is nothing but a base to emitter, base to emitter junction voltage for the Q3 transistor minus VD, minus VD. That means in this way, from here, we started in this direction. Okay, this is the output voltage expression we are writing. So, V0 is equal to VCC minus VR2 minus VBE3 minus VD. VD is nothing but diode voltage. VD is nothing but diode voltage. So, this will be approximately for the theoretical values you can say 3.4 to 3.8 volts which is a logic high level which is treated as logic high level. How you can say that it is a logic high or it is a logic low that completely depends on the logic families. In logic families we are having several logic families like TTL, CMOS, ECL. Okay. In these logic different logic families, every logic family is having its own specifications. From 3.4 or 3.5 above we can say that it is a logic high. 1.5 below it is a logic zero such type of uh, specifications are there with respect to the logic families for TTL logic family we can read this 3.5 to 3.8 volt cells logic high so the circuit perfectly now acting as perfectly now acting as a NAND gate to input NAND gate okay so this is TTL NAND gate thank you